It's Royce. Oh, no. Hold on. <laughs> This is what happens when you let me fly the plane. Oh, I got okay. stuck. Rick Flair well, got, got stuck. Uh, the, we got the a Rick lot of Flair. Woo -woo. We got a lot of Rick Flairs there. This is what, when Declan's getting married and uh, and lets us fly the plane. Apparently, the Rick Flair woo. I'm not allowed woo. anywhere near no. the yoke. Let's just make this clear, okay? Oh, no, that's uh, you know once uh, once I get in there and uh, I can I can hear it through my headphones. That's it. That's the end of it. That's yeah. That's don't touch anything. Technology. Yeah. That's my end of my technology. How about right. Willie Castro? Willie That's Castro is an all-star. Yeah, let's go. You know, the <laughs> Twins, uh, I think I read this. The Twins had uh, the most wins of teams with only one player in the all-star game. The Twins had the best. So I'm I'm sure they called up, you know, the Boshi or whoever does it called up, uh, you know, the league office called up Rocco and said, who, who, who do you got? Who should we put on a club? And uh and uh, I, he he recommended Willie, and the way they've used him, you know, hey, good for him. I think it's great to have a guy like that on the on the All Star team. Yeah, Patrick, where is he uh, tracking as far as I was trying to think of this last night? As far as potential like all time Twins true utility, utility guys, so not guys that just played a few positions. Because I mean, he's played what five spots. Yes, over twenty games at five. Yeah, spots. so it's that's a, no, no, it can't be over twenty, over fifteen or something at, at five spots, something like that. So, because uh, we haven't gotten to that, but it is. I mean, and and center field. The funny thing, I don't, I don't like him too well in center field. In contrast to Buxton, that's for sure. Yeah, agree but, completely. But he's a little better at shortstop, and he's okay at second than I thought he'd be. You know, I, he's a little better at shortstop. He can, he doesn't have to play there often because Correa is there all the time. But he's, uh, he's, he's now he isn't hot right now. He was, he was smoking there. He was terrible for what three weeks maybe to start the year. He was striking out all the time, and then he was. Two months, he was great. He's a little cool lately, but uh, I mean, has he still played every game? He did, he hasn't started every game. I believe I he has appeared in every game. Every, yeah, he's appeared in every game. Appeared in every game. He, he didn't start the second game of the double header a couple days ago, and I think that might have been the first time he didn't start. No, no, he hadn't started like about four. He hadn't okay. started about four, but he's you know he's always going to come in, especially platoon nuts like Rocco Rocco is in the late innings when he right. starts. He's the perfect player for him. And, you know, uh, they don't have him here in the bigs now because he got hurt, but they they like Austin Martin for the same reason. You know, they can play him all over the field too, and he doesn't, you know, put the bat in the ball. Willie's got some power, though. What's he got? Six, seven home runs, I think eight, maybe something like yeah. that. Is so. he, okay, if we, I'm putting you guys on the spot here, but if we go back all time, you know, Cesar Tovar is the ultimate. Yes, if, yes. Where, is. where, where, where would Willie rank in a top ten pecking order of all-time Twins utility players? I uh, I should have uh, researched that if I was going to talk Nick about Nick Punto him. had a like every other Nick, year. Nick yes. Punto hit three hundred was pretty good. But Nick never played in the outfield, you know. Really, I mean, Nick 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 played. There's a lot of guys who play second, short, and third, but the ones yeah. that throw the outfield in is. Uh, is, is a little different animal. I'd have to look back, but I'd say the closest is Cesar. Although if you look at Cesar, once he got later in his career, he, he pretty much just played the outfield. He didn't, he, I think they started him at third base one year and he played quite a bit there. But, uh, you know, he's famous because he played every position, but uh, he was pretty much an outfielder, too. I, I, I'd have to look. I'm wondering. He's pretty high up. He's pretty high up. guy, infield, I outfield combo. I, I, you know, I mean, I, I'd have to really stretch my Jeff brain. Jeff Rebele in the 90s. Yeah, played. yeah right. Jeff he, he didn't play right. the outfield, right? He no. played second, did Reb, third. Did Reb ever play the outfield? Uh, well, Maybe for an inning. He, how about really Jason knows. Bartlett? He played the outfield. What, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> in Cleveland, it ruined three his career. In, three innings in Cleveland one day, and we never saw him again. And he yeah. quit. Yeah, right. He, quit baseball. I don't know if he quit or they quit on him, but it was that was uh, – I know Gardy, he'd become one of Gardy's favorites. He brought him in and put him in left field that one game, and holy cow. It was, uh, there's uh, there's been a few of them that uh, had a little trouble. Stevie Braun was a uh, third baseman and one of my all-time favorites in the 70s. But uh, they'd stick him out in the outfield once in a while, and he ended up playing most of the time out there. But the first day he played in Fenway, 
I thought he was going to kill himself. It was the ball was the ball was hitting the wall, and he was going like this when it came flying back at him. It, <laughs> it was unbelievable. They were running, he was running it up because he'd always run right up to the wall and then boom, oh, no. there'd go bouncing back. He never, he did not have it figured out. He was, uh, he was. Uh, they, he, he was not an outfielder and for those circumstances i want to tell you it's amazing you know if you if you guy who's, if you're a guy who hasn't played much in the outfield and all of a sudden you get there and look at that thing i mean how how do you figure it out it's you know they, they can hit you five balls and bp and say here's what it does but that yeah thing, but there's not people sitting in the stands during no. batting practice too <laughs> yeah. that's no it's well yeah and I, for years it was just you know it was just a wall there and they they got they got the one in spring training now <laughs> but it's different you know because they you know they they have fans sitting inside it now so it's not not the same but it's uh i think it's the greatest it's the greatest piece of geography in in, in baseball though don't you think the monster the monster yeah, yeah. probably because yeah. yeah. i mean that ballpark is there's a lot of funky ballparks but they make them but this is funky because they built it somewhere in 1910 that they didn't have any other space so they said well yeah. we you know what though pat Speaking of scary, Wrigley Field would be as well because you got the yeah. ivy. But if you run into that sucker, there ain't that's, nothing protecting you behind yeah, that. Yeah, that's true, and it's it it has changed a lot because they've modernized it so much, and they get scoreboards all around. And I mean, it's they've come a long way from when they had the uh, the the mechanical scoreboard and then the men's room underneath it. <laughs> the, the, the biggest drunken toilet in America, the dirtiest bathroom in America underneath oh, yeah, it. I've been there. That was the, uh, that oh, yeah. was the Wrigley, you know, and, you know, all the, all the guys who paid three bucks to get in the stadium and then f four bucks for a beer. And we were all, I, you know, as I've said a hundred times, I was there with Beck and, you know, Vec drinking beer with Vec, and I wasn't drinking beer, but he was drinking beer in 83. I did I sat with him in a game, and every time he went in the men's room, they'd say, Come on, Bill, let Bill get up to the front. And Bad Bill would go up there with his peg leg and uh, get in the front, and there was a, about an inch of urine all over the floor of the thing. Oh, so it was oh yeah. The worst. It was the worst. It was the best worst of all. You know, it was. The old the the old Wrigley will never be replaced with all the uh, with all the improvements for sure. But anyway, hey Willie Cat, yeah, I I bet. I wonder if we've ever had one. I'll have, I'm gonna look through the uh, the the, the outfield there. factor. If if you're gonna yeah. you know if you're gonna give extra credit for being able oh, to play outfield, there's not yeah, which you should. Mm -hmm. There's not that many because it doesn't cross over very often. No, so, and, I mean, yeah. and what you're always looking for is the infielder who can play all three spots, right? That's it, you know. You know, a, a, Willie a, Castro a, is a, is basically doing what they wanted Nick Gordon to do two or three years. Like, they were hoping yes. Nick Gordon would become Willie Castro. And, and by the way, Nick Gordon's having a fairly good year for Miami. He's, uh, I, I think he's healthy. You never know if he's on the disabled list or if he's uh, playing, but he's... Uh, and it's it's a little easy to get lost in the shuffle with Miami, uh, whether you're you having a good year or not. But last time I looked, he was hitting the, now not playing all the time, but he was hitting in three hundred. So he was. Uh, I, I I wasn't too. Uh, Who would we get for him? Okert? Was that Okert? Yeah, was, was that, it the Okert trade? Okert, Okert. Yeah. yeah, I think it was Okert. Yeah, it's yeah. a pitcher. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know what's uh, okay. All star break. The halfway point. We're going to call it the second half, even wow. though we're, yeah. even though we're sixty percent of the way through the season or something, sixty fifty eight percent. What do we think? Are they good or not? I think they're better than last year. I do too. I do too. Uh, but the the sunny gray factor yeah. is uh, is tough, you know, because they don't have. But Ober and and uh, Joe Ryan are way better than they were last year. So, mm -hmm. you know, and over, over was getting ready to get shut down at this time last year. And uh, he doesn't look like a guy that has to get shut down. He's, that is, I mean, he's 6'9", so it, it's kind of distorted. But it looks easy, doesn't it? I mean, he just, the, the way he, he, he has the ball for nine seconds, and here comes another pitch. He's got the great changeup. He's got 
a little slider. Every once in a while, somebody hits a home run off him. He just goes back to throwing strikes. So he's uh, yeah. he's uh, he's a very unique pitcher because he what's he throw ninety three maybe that's it yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but it uh, looks it gets up on you a little quicker yeah. and because oh, he's six yes. nine. He's, yeah, he's, they say he's Morneau's a big guy talking about reach, and uh, you know he should know. And uh, he said that Ober's uh, what extra two feet closer to you than everybody else when he throws it when he throws. So I, I you know that's the that's the factor that right now is making up for Sonny. But they still, you know, Simeon Woods Richardson has been a key and. Maybe he's good, and then uh, uh, Paddock's not going to make it to the finish line, though. I don't think so. But yeah, they anyway, should they they're... should plan for that now. I feel like yeah, they're not good. as they're. I, I think they're a better team right now than they were a year ago in the regular season. I don't know in their current construction that they're a better playoff team yeah, because of the pitching. Because you don't have Gray. But I'm more concerned yeah. about the starting. Is pitching anyone there. still lamenting Kenta Maeda's loss? By the way, got moved to the bullpen. I, he has been I, awful. I know the Twins got nine off him, and I think he got. I think he gave up eight his next start, and they said, "Okay, that's enough." Seventeen and seventeen runs in six innings or something is, uh, uh, you know, I mean, they got a phenomenal season out of him during the pandemic, but uh, that's. That stuff doesn't work anymore in, in baseball, I don't think. How about the, everyone? Uh, the, I was reading the comments on uh, the Pirates not allowing Paul Skeens to uh, go on for his no hitter after yeah. seven innings. Now, six pitches not, in the six pitches in the seventh was, I I've, think, the I, well. Plus, Shelton sounded like a complete idiot because he said, "I could see he was tiring in the seventh. <laughs> Hey, Rick, he threw seven, six pitches. That was, uh, you should have, uh, you should have looked yeah. at it. But who knows? You know, he's such an agitator. He might have just been digging people because he knew they were coming after him. But I, I think it is a good question that I'm hearing everybody. What made 100 the magic number? What? Why is that well, the magic number? And that's why what is, Shelton tried to say. It's not the pitches. It's, it's, it's to your point, what I saw there. You know, it's yeah, what I saw. Six pitches. You didn't see enough. You know there. what? Flat out, baseball people no longer care for the most part about things like no, no hitters. hitters. They, no. Don't. They, don't. they don't. They just no, don't. They don't. No, but but what we I'm do, saying but... is, if he throws six pitches, and I'm yeah, not a guy that they keep him in, let him let him like well, how many did we have? Liriano throw 140 when he got his when he got his six in, in Chicago. Johan 135. Six with the Mets, who who was that? Yeah, Johan. That pretty well ruined him. But yeah. uh, I don't know why it's a hundred. I mean, if a guy has a six pitch seventh, uh, yeah, let him start the eighth. You know, see what happens. Why, why isn't it a hundred and ten? This guy's six foot six. Plus, he's got a gymnast as a girlfriend, so he gets a lot of exercise. So he's he a just, good guy. Yeah, <laughs> not a bad point. Yeah. yeah, that's right. He's he's limber. You know, let's go. <laughs> yeah, no, it's. I mean, part, I feel like that's part of the appeal of baseball too. We talk about how many must-watch moments are there throughout a baseball season. Well, yes. it used to be that somebody has a no hitter or a perfect game going into the sixth or seventh, and it's like, oh, you got to rush over. And that doesn't exist anymore. No one cares. Yeah. Like, the, like the teams don't care about it anymore. No. This guy, though, man, alive. They were, you know, they all, he was, he was at Air Force two years ago. He was catching and pitching at Air Force. Yeah. Then he went to LSU and, you know, West, I don't think West had to do anything, but uh, he was playing for West. But he's only, this is his third year. That he wasn't at Air Force, I think it's uh, it's amazing how good he is, and he's going to start. I, I know Dan, the commissioner's office has ordered the uh, National League to start Skeens in the first game and in, in the All Star game for sure. But then again, it's only an inning. He can come out and throw eight pitches. They nobody will let him come out. You can't pitch two innings in the All Star game anymore. Well, he'll look fatigued after seven pitches. So you got to make sure yeah. Derek yeah. Shelton. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, he, he's lasted longer than his last inning here. He's pitched, <laughs> he's throwing seven pitches here, but uh, he's a, uh, I'll tell you, uh, my observation on pitching, and I told you guys this the other day, 
I don't know how anybody gets a hit. <laughs> you know, it's when, crazy yeah. when you when you're. I mean, you got five, six, seven guys on every team that can. You know, they've not only thrown uh, ninety eight in five different pitches, but they're never in the inside middle of the box anymore. The hanger, the hanger, those gifts from God. That, Nobody throws them. In. How many? How many do you get? You know, once in a while, late in the game, you get the rotten end of the bullpen. But when when teams are using their good pitches, you don't get any pitches to hit. It's amazing. Yeah, it is crazy. Yeah, these guys. You know, they they all put so much work into. With there's so much information to know yes. what the opponent's weaknesses are, and it's you wonder why strikeouts are up and batting averages <laughs> are down. Well, guys aren't lobbing you know 88 mile an hour meatballs anymore. Ten no. times a game. No, you're not, uh, you know, because you're not, you know, you're not expected to go more than ever, go more than 100 pitches. How many did yeah. Jack throw in uh, in, uh, in 91, game one, seven? I, let me find that, that, actually. That's one That's one stat that we should have in our mind, but I don't know what it you're is. You're right. You know? I think it was like a Because we didn't care about pitch count back then. Yeah. In 91, we didn't really think about pitch count. Well, hey, I've told you guys this, but when I was covering Paul in the 70s, it, there was no, there was no official count. You know, AP didn't keep it. Nobody kept it. Herb Carneal kept it. I'd go once in a while, go in and say, Herbie, how many pitches is he thrown so far? You know, the seventh. <laughs> if some guy was out there labor, and I'd ask Herbie, and Herbie looked through his book. Her, Kirby, Herbie kept it, so he could refer back that he hit a three and two pitch. You know, that somebody uh, he's. You know, this is his third at bat, and Herbie would always tell you what he'd done previously, and and he hit a three-two pitch to, you know, for a base hit. So that's why he yeah. kept kept it. It, but, it was a breezy one hundred twenty-six pitches for really? Jack Morris. That's, that's pretty good for yeah. ten. Ten innings, one hundred twenty-six. You're pitches. right. We just didn't think of it. No, no, and uh, of course, uh, I don't think uh, Kelly wanted to take him out because of any pitch count. It was just that. The emotion of the Bowman team. He had figured the guy had to be drained by then, don't you think? Uh, you're running off the mound after they pulled, turned off that double, pulled off that double play, and uh, uh, but I, I, if Paul Skeens is uh, ever ever get, he's not getting, he's not going ten. He's not going ten in a World Series game. By the way, the Pirates are pretty good. They uh, yeah. they're starting to beat teams. They might end up in the playoffs with him. And uh, now that Jones is hurt, but uh, I've watched him a couple of times lately. They're pretty good. Hey, if the Pirates win the World Series, what kind of car should they be driving uh, up and down the parade route? <laughs> a Buick or a GMC for dang sure. And if they want, if they come to town, if you're here for a four day series. You can go out there on Monday and drive home. We, you want to drive the car back to Chicago on Thursday. You can do that. Jim Paul and Brett Paul's Valley Group of GM dealers. Buicks and GMC products. Apple Valley and Hastings. Right now, they have a full stock, four different forms of SUVs, a station wagon, and uh, the Sierra trucks, the heavy-duty trucks. They got the smaller trucks, too, but the heavy-duty trucks. Yukons. And, of course, I always mention the Hummer EV because I'm still waiting to see one of those. That would be something. Yeah. Anyway, Jim Paul and Brett Paul, low interest rates right now, uh, 0.9, 1.9, factory rebates right now, uh, full, uh, full of stock. It's not, uh, you know, we had the chip problem after the ap 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 uh, pandemic. We don't have that anymore. So uh, Jim Paul and Brett Paul. Head on out there today. Hastings and Apple Valley, they'll make you a good deal. I've been buying cars there for 12, 15 years. I don't know how long, but forever. All right. Well, Pat, enjoy your, your weekend here. We'll see if the Twins can finish the first half of the season with a series win, and then they, they come back home, Brewers and, and uh, Phillies. I want to make right? one more point. Did you see what the, uh, the uh, buzzword for uh, PJ's football team is this year? No. Violence. Did you see that? Everybody violence. Was, everybody, oh, we're going with violence. Everybody was quoted. They threw violence into their sentence. We want to be. We want to. We want to be violent this year. So it's violence. Wow. Violence. Okay. Is a, I sort of like it. Is that an acronym? V I O L. <laughs> I don't know if he's figured out an acronym. Now. That'd be a long acronym. <laughs> but uh, I've already gotten on Max Brosmer. He's talking about. We don't want. 
we don't want it to be like it was, you know, like it was around here last year. You weren't here, pal. You were in New Hampshire. How the hell do you know? You were playing Monmouth and Maine. How the hell do you know? You know, but uh, they get caught up in the buzzwords and they can't stop. So. Here's your homework assignment for next week. Come up with an acronym for violence. <laughs> okay. That could very, be a column idea. Right very there. intense. I got to. Okay. I don't think. I don't know after that, but, but here. Very I'm, intently observing. Uh, Losing, I need to keep going. <laughs> no, the, no, the, no, the, no. the Big Ten is now an 18 team league, right? Yes. 18 teams. I don't care what you you can be violent, you can be right. passive. I don't care if you're the Gophers, have fun because yeah, you ain't gonna make a dent. Look at it though. UCLA isn't good, you know. We're gonna that's gonna be a big victory, but because they're but they're coming here. They're you, good, yeah. beat, you should beat UCLA, they're not good, yeah. And they took some coach cheap, you know. It is a little bit of a down. I mean, Harbaugh just left Michigan. Yes, but right. It's not. Caleb it Williams is. left USC. Okay, it's you'll, not impossible. But Oregon, but, Oregon, Ohio okay, State. Okay, Penn you'll State. finish <laughs> eighth okay, or seventh and call it a moral victory. Yeah. Washi well, Washington, UW gonna, just lost players. What are they going to do, though, when the uh, uh, the somebody's playing the easy schedule and then you got – you know Southern Cal, and they're going to have Michigan and Ohio State and Penn State, and they're going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to play that. So what if you, some guy, what if somebody's like Iowa was last year and goes eight and one because they got a cupcake schedule, and they ended up in the. Yeah. You, end you up know what we need? I, I've got the solve. So this is the first year of the expanded college football playoff that starts yes. in like December. We need the expanded conference tournament playoff. Oh, so God we need. Yeah. Let's, let's do let's let's, let's do a six these, team. <laughs> let's let's make these student athletes play more games. Should we make it illegal to use the term student athletes in Division One sports? I think we should. We should. Yeah. At this point, yeah, yes. we could no longer uh, or coaches get... caring. I want to develop young men. No, you yeah. don't. You don't care about that. No, That's okay too. Care. Yes, yes, we don't. It's fodder. So. All right, gents. All right, All right Pat. There he is, Have Patrick Royce. Royce Unchained, presented by Josh Arnold, investment consultant.